So you've applied for that job, got a call back from the recruiter, and passed the 30-minute phone screen. Chances are the next step in the hiring process will be an online assessment where you're going to sit down with another software engineer and you guys are going to pair on a coding exercise. Here, you're going to be judged on the completeness and accuracy of your solution. This is where your real-world coding skills are going to be tested. I've gone through a bunch of these myself, so I thought that in this video, I'd give you guys some insight into what that typically looks like for junior and intermediate front-end engineers so that you're gonna be prepared for your next online assessment. Every company is different, but what I've noticed recently with interviews for front-end engineers especially is that there is less of a focus on asking leak code style questions and more emphasis on realistic scenarios that you might encounter day-to-day -day on the job. So for this video, I'm going to give you a mock online assessment featuring questions that you will very likely encounter in your next front-end online assessment. So if you're applying for a junior to intermediate front-end development position, this video is for you, let's get started. Typically at the beginning of your online assessment, you're gonna be asked to share your screen and they might give you a link to an online sandbox or coding platform. Today, I'm going to use playcode.io and if you wanna follow along, click the link below and select the React starter template. I'll be using React for this video, but you don't really need to know React in order to follow along with me since we're gonna focus entirely on JavaScript here. This mock online assessment is made up of a few parts and each part will build on top of the previous one. So let's get started. Part one. Suppose you want to develop an app that determines which one of your friends calls you the most each week. Each item in this array represents the person and the number of calls they gave you that day. And this entire array is all the calls over the entire week. As you can see, it's not grouped by name or the day of the week. Your first task is to simply display each element in this list in this format. Name, colon, number of calls. Feel free to just pause this video and come back once you have an answer. All right, so that should have been pretty straightforward. We're going to use dot map and return each item in the array as a list element. Remember that dot map does not modify the original array, but instead it creates a brand new array. And that is populated by the result of calling the callback function on each item in the original array. One mistake that I see a lot of people make and I make myself is that we leave out the return keyword. And because it doesn't throw an error, we're just left with an empty list because it returns undefined and we don't know why our list is empty. Okay, time for part two. Next, what we want to do is sort this data so that we can see which one of our friends messaged us the most over the past week. Before we can actually sort the data, we need to find a way to tally up the total number of calls made by each person over the week. So pause here and think about how you would implement that. All right, so if we look at this array, we can clearly see that there are duplicate names on this list. So what we want to do first is return an object that groups the array items by the name property. There are several ways you could go about doing this, but I think the best approach here would be to use reduce. Reduce takes in an array of values and reduces it to a single value. I know everyone calls reduce the most complicated JavaScript array function, but it's really not that bad. What we're going to do essentially is create a brand new empty object and we're going to loop through the calls array. Each time we're going to check if the name exists in the total calls per person object. If it does, we add to the existing sum. And if not, we add a new key value pair. So reduce takes in two parameters. The first one is the callback function that you want to run on each iteration. And the second one here is going to be the starting point, which is an empty object. Think of this empty object as the empty object that we're gonna add the key value pairs to. The callback function passed into reduce takes in two parameters. The first one is known as the accumulator, but in this case, I'm going to call it calls by name because this represents the object that we eventually want to return, which is an object that groups the total number of messages by the unique person. And the second parameter, of course, is the item, which is the item in the original array that we are currently iterating on. First thing we're gonna do is store the current item's name into a variable, and let's call this current name. Now we're gonna check if our calls by name object already has that current name. 
If it does, we're going to add the new number of calls to the current total for that person. And if it doesn't, we're going to add a new key value pair to the calls by name object. And just like dot map, don't forget to return the calls by name object from your callback function. So let's console log the result of calling reduce here. Okay, looking at the console log, it looks like it's correct. Part three. So now we have this object where the name is the key and the total number of calls is the value. But now we need to sort this object by the most number of calls received. How are we gonna do that? Pause here and come back to me once you think you have an idea. Again, there are several different ways you could go about doing this, but I think the most straightforward solution here is to turn every one of these key value pairs into an object and push it into another array, which is gonna let us sort it fairly easily. Keep in mind here that time is of the essence, so don't try and get too fancy with your solutions. Especially with front-end interviews, they're more interested in seeing if you know how to solve the problems and which tools to use, rather than asking you to come up with your own sorting algorithm. All right, let's create a new array here and we're going to call it the sorted array. We're going to use a for in loop because we want to loop through the total calls per person and that is an object. For every name in the total calls per person object, we are going to push into our sorted array a brand new object comprised of the name and the total number of calls for that name. Now let's log this out and see what we get. All right, so now it looks like our key value pairs are inside objects inside of an array, but now we've actually got to sort our sorted array. Okay, so now that we've transformed our object into an array, this will allow us access to a lot of built-in array methods such as sort, filter, etc. And it's a really good idea to get familiar with these methods because you're going to be using them over and over again in interviews. And you don't want to have to waste a lot of time Googling which one to use. So in order to sort our array of objects by the num of calls property, all we need to do is use the built-in sort method and pass in a custom callback function, where, which we're gonna fill out, and we're gonna tell JavaScript exactly how we want our array to be sorted. The array sort method sorts the array by passing in two values at a time to our uh, custom sort function. So in this case, we're gonna call it A and B, but you can call it whatever you want. In our case, we want to compare the objects by their num of calls property. So in our callback function, we want to return a.num of calls minus b.num of calls. According to the sort method documentation, we need to return a number from our custom sort function. If we return a negative number, a is sorted before b. If we return a positive number, b comes before a. And if we return zero, the position will remain unchanged. In this case, if a.num of calls is greater than b.num of calls and we return a positive number, that means b will come before a. In other words, the person that has the smaller number of calls is going to come before the person with the larger number of calls. Obviously, it's good to understand how this works, but personally, I can never remember these rules. So what I do is I just try it out and test it and see if it's in the order I want. If not, I just reverse A and B. So we want it in descending order. So we're just going to change this. Boom. All right. So that looks like it's in the right order.
So now that we have this sorted array, let's display it. So all we need to do is replace the one that we're currently displaying with our new sorted array. There we go. Part four, implement a search function so that the list here only shows the name that you searched for. Don't forget to pause and try it yourself first before coming back for the solution. All right, so first things first, I'm going to paste in here a basic text input box and we should probably store that somewhere. So we're gonna have to import use state from React and store this into some sort of state. I'm also going to add an on change handler onto my input box and we're going to set the search term to whatever the value of the input box is. Next, we're going to create a new array called filtered array. And as the name suggests, this is going to store the sorted array, but filtered by the search term. And in the callback function that we pass into filter, we want to specify that we only want to return items where the name includes the search term. By the way, in a real world scenario, you definitely wouldn't want to have all of these functions stored in one file. This is pretty messy, but because this is a tutorial and for the sake of time and simplicity, I'm just going to keep it all in here, but just keep that in mind. Now let's replace the list that we're currently displaying with the new filtered array. Now, if we start typing in letters into the search box, the list should be filtered by whatever we type in. All right, this is pretty much done, but we can even improve this a little bit more by making the search term case insensitive. All I need to do is set the array items name property to lowercase, as well as set the search term uh, to lowercase. And we're done. And that is the end of our mock online assessment. I hope you guys found that helpful. If you have any questions or concerns, leave me a comment because I read every single one. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Good luck at your interviews. Bye-bye.